Cosmic Crucible is one of the most important game modes in Marvel Strike Force. There's tons of valuable resources awaiting you if you could dominate this mode. And in this video, we're not talking about the best teams because I think you know some of the best teams for offense and defense in Crucible. No, we're talking about some of the best plug and play characters that could work in multiple teams to help you solve specific problems that some of these defenses might be giving you. So if you're ready to count on the best plug and play characters for Cosmic Crucible, you know what to do. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Alley flying. Happy holidays, Valley Club. Welcome back to the Valley Flying Channel. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we're talking all about Cosmic Crucible, the best plug and play characters that you could use in Cosmic Crucible because it is one of the most important game modes in Marvel Strike Force. Lots of great things in the Crucible store. So you're getting your Crucible credits, your elite Crucible credits for some of these awesome characters and your T2 level four ions, which are very, very rare in Marvel Strike Force. So dominating this mode is very, very important. But before we get to the best plug and play characters for Cosmic Crucible. I want to remind you, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos on this channel. There's countdown lists like this video. We have gameplay. We got news. Everything to help your Marvel Strike Force experience. So hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know as soon as a new video goes up. But let's talk about this list. Let's talk about some of the best characters in Marvel Strike Force right now. Now, one of the problems that you may be running into in Cosmic Crucible are certain characters that need to ability block like a Dr. Doom or a uh, Squirrel Girl that need to be ability block right away or it could make your whole battle go south and some of the characters that will help you do that that could fit into multiple teams are these characters starting with Baron Zemo yes he has a very early ability block on his ultimate is a very fast character and most characters he will be able to go in front of which means that you're going to be able to do this ability block before the rest of the team goes so this ultimate very very good it starts off with this move he gives him the charge and because of his passive here he has this big AoE attack 300% damage for non-minion ally uh, enemies and 400% damage for minion enemies so very, very good move. Baron Zemo fits into many, many teams, but there are other characters that have that very early ability block, and another one is Silver Surfer. Now, Silver Surfer was a very dominant character when he was released, so dominant, in fact, that it was like a pre-Silver Surfer releases and post-Silver Surfer releases, and many of these characters that haven't had their base stats updated since Silver Surfer are kind of struggling, so he's a very, very good character. But he hasn't really found a team, and I think the best thing that you can use Silver Surfer on is a plug-and-play team. So putting him into a team, into some hybrid team, that you need this power. And his ultimate also is a very, very strong move. It's like a big AoE attack, clearing immunity, heal block, clearing all charge, which you can use against someone like Red Hulk. But you got an ability block as well. Two turns for the ability block. So if you want that ability block sticking, you need a block for two turns. Silver Surfer is the way to go. The rest of his moves are very good as well. He has a strong disrupted on his special. And he could uh, transfer negative effects from this character to the primary target. And then uh, transfer the positive effects from the primary target back to him. So he's going to flip-flop the negative and the positives of your stuff. Fits into so many teams. Silver Surfer is a great plug-and-play character. And the uh, last early ability to block that I think you might want to consider adding to multiple teams is Omega Red. Now, Omega Red in this season that we have right now with Wolverine on the Weapon X team, the Weapon X team, you may want to keep Omega Red on that Weapon X team. But if you're using uh, some other characters like Lady Deathstrike or Wolverine on other teams, uh, He's got an early ability block right here on his special. Relatively fast character. He's not going to go as fast as Zemo or someone like Silver Surfer, but he's, he's pretty fast. And you got his early ability block with a trauma that's going to infect the rest of the team. And he has a late ability block as well, flipping all positive effects, the negative effects, attacking your primary target, and then getting that ability block, slow heal block, does so much damage. In war, he's going to do trauma to all allies. If he did that in Cosmic Crucible, that would be overly broken skill. But a uh, very, very good character for that early ability block. Now, sometimes you face these mirror matches, uh, particularly with the Tangled Web team, that you just want to get in front of them. Or with an Unlimited X team, they you do a mirror match replace the weakest member of your team with one of these speed bar manipulating characters like 
Emma Frost because what she does on her passive, uh, she's gonna apply negative 10 speed to all enemies and this affects her base stats. So this doesn't go away. So they're gonna be a little slower for the remainder of the battle. So Emma Frost is a great plug and play character. One of the best characters in the game. And this passive is why she's remained in the meta discussion for a while as far as arena and every other game mode because uh, you just have a mirror match. You put Emma in there and yeah, they're gonna be faster, which allow you to get an early stun or ability block on your opponents. Emma also doesn't just bring a, a speed bar manipulation. She also brings this cleanse here, cleaning all negative herself and all allies. Very, very valuable member of the team. Now there's two other characters that I do wanna highlight that do some speed bar manipulation. The first one is all the way down here to Cable. Now Cable is very good on, uh, if you're using uh, unlimited X-Men versus unlimited X-Men, you take out Phantom X, put in Cable, and you should be able to get that early stun on Rogue or the early ability block on Rogue. And Cable's passive reads, on spawn fill speed bar five five percent for self and all allies and that is just enough to get ahead of your enemies in mirror matches and last but not least let's not forget loki now loki works a little better with the eternals because what he's going to do on spawn fill speed bar by 15 percent and he's going to fill the speed bar of mystic controller allies so very very specific by 10%. And what this allows you to do, if you're using him with the Eternals, allows Cersei to go before Icarus, which means that you're getting more damage on the enemies before Icarus goes, and hopefully gets his, uh, Icarus's double tap. So Icarus, Loki works very well with the Eternals or any other Mystic Controller allies that you need to go ahead. And another Mystic Controller that benefits from that Loki passive is the sister of Loki, it is Hela. And Hela is another speed bar manipulator of her own. She doesn't just manipulate speed bar. She also has this very powerful ultimate, which is a big AOE attack, clearing three death through from all enemies, attacking all enemies, 350% damage, spreading negative effects, four negative effects for the primary target to everybody else on the field. And the best thing about this, maybe not the best thing, but one of the best things that got added to this move is characters killed by this attack cannot be revived. So characters revive once like those Heroes for Hire on War Defense, any characters paired with Dormammu, the Infinity Watch, well, they're not gonna come back to life when you do this ultimate and Hela kills them. Now, where she gets the speed bar manipulation from, not her passive, it is from this undead Asgardian who has been nicknamed Greg. Uh, if you're newer to the community, back in some of the earlier data mines before Hela was released, the devs were calling this undead Asgardian Greg, and the name kind of stuck with the community. So if you're wondering who Greg is, this is Greg. And Greg manipulates turn meter when he dies. But the thing about this undead Asgardian is Hela keeps bringing uh, somebody a new one every time this Greg dies. So on death, He's gonna reduce the speed bar of all enemies by 10%. So uh, if they're dying a lot, the enemies are getting a reduction of their speed. And you could thank Black Panther for this because uh, Black Panther, if you remember his passive, every time he kills somebody, he gets a full turn meter again. Well, people were abusing that with Greg and they added that line of text later so that uh, the Wakandans couldn't just abuse the Asgardians. Now, uh, this gives Hela some benefit and gives her turn meter manipulation, which is why Hela is in the arena meta right now. Now, other things that you're gonna need, not just speed bar manipulation, not just ability to box, you're gonna need some damage, but there's some great characters that add some damage, plus some other benefits. One of them is this guy right here, Shang-Chi. And his best move here is his ultimate. It's a big AOE attack, attacking all enemies, 450% damage. And if that enemy had any positive effects, he's gonna do additional 75% damage for each positive effect on the primary target. And this is the big one here. Not only does he do this big damage move, not only is this can the attack cannot be counterattacked, blocked, or dodged, but he's also gonna reduce the speed bar of the enemies by 10%. So he gives you damage, he gives you speed bar manipulation all in his ultimate, and it's an awesome three turn cooldown as well. He also brings some healing with some big damage as well. So Shang-Chi is uh, one of the characters that is a great plug and play character. Another great character that is plug and play is this Gal Kestrel. One of the best characters in the game, very, very hard to kill. And anytime you want 
one of your enemies has defense down and you attack that enemy, Keshul's just gonna ping them and ping them to death. Her, one of her best moves, not the best move, her, one of her best moves is the ultimate here. Doing all positive effects for her primary target, defense down to the primary target for two turns, and then 600% piercing. So if he, you can use this to one shot a lot of enemies. If there's an enemy taunter that's in the way, Keshul can sometimes one shot that enemy if your Keshul is big enough and that taunting enemy is smaller. So Kestrel, very, very good uh, damage plus. And then she also has this move. This is probably my favorite move of hers, where you're attacking all the adjacent targets, putting defense down on every single one of them. She's getting speed up for two turns, immunity to self. And it's also unavoidable, which means that Weaver's charges, well, this, this will still go through Weaver's charges. So Kestrel is a great plug and play character. Normally I'm using her on the Secret Avengers, countering teams like Uncanny X-Man, or if I see a Mr. Sinister there because of her passive and just killing those characters. But uh, if you just need an opening damage, Kestrel works very, very good and fits into many teams, not just the Secret Avengers. And another guy that fits into multiple, multiple teams on offense and on defense is this guy, Dr. Doom. Now, if you see him on defense, you got to get one of those early ability block characters to take care of him because uh, you don't want this ultimate going off. Now, his special is the big move here. This is the big 500% damage heal block and it's applying heal block and 100% damage per Doombot ally, but this is the one that you don't want going off because he's gonna clear negative effects himself, the most injured non-summoned ally with the highest damage, you're going to heal himself, heal the most injured non-summoned ally for 100%. He's going to fill this speed bot by 300%, which means he gets two more Doom bots on the field before he could do his special. And he's also going to give his uh, the ally with the highest damage three more turns as well. So strong, strong character works into so many teams. Older character, all the way back in Dark Dimension 4, but he's still relevant because that big explosion move. And last but not least is our Dark Dimension 5 character, Dormammu, brings damage and some, which uh, let's talk about this stun that he has on his uh, special here. Very, very strong move. Trauma for two turns, cannot be blocked, and uh, does very, very important stun. A lot of characters you want to get an early stun. Dormammu does that. Don't stun Dr. Doom, though. Uh, this is another big move, clearing all negative effects from stealth, heal block, healing self and allies for 40% of this character's max health, and he has a big health base stat there. It's also gonna attack the primary target for 300% piercing. All enemies, 500% piercing, so big, big move. And the best thing about this, maybe not the best thing, but one of the best things about this, Unavoidable, cannot be blocked, cannot be counterattacked. So Weaver, yeah, this is gonna go right through Weaver on all her charges. And then he's got an AoE attack on his basics. So if you're running out of that special, running out of that ultimate, you can still do an AoE attack with Dormammu. It does such a big move. And let's not forget this revive once here. If his health is started, is his health is full at the start of the match. This character is not a clone. All allies gain revive once for forty percent of this this uh, this their character's max health. So Dormammu brings so much, and I think he's better used on offense rather than defense, especially in this age of X season that we're in right now in Cosmic Crucible. So save him for offense, and then you could go into a team with no hero mutants to fight them and uh, give you your extra energy. Now there's another thing that you may want, and this is more against these Gamma teams, and that's a pre-match taunt. Now, there's two characters that do that, Drax and Red Guardian. Red Guardian is a much better tank and a much better character than Drax is. Now, the reason that you might want to do this against Gamma is because that opening special of Red Hulk will remove any revive once. So if you bring Dormammu in with other characters against Gamma, well, Red Guardian can soak that up. He could take, he can get his re revive once removed. Not a big deal. You got your other four characters there to handle the rest of the Gamma team. And hopefully you brought in strong enough characters that could do that. But as far as a pre-match taunt, making sure that he is always attacked and the rest of your four characters are safe. Well, Red Guardian is a great character for that. Uh, like I said, only two characters do do that and he's much better than Drax. And last but not least, let's talk about energy batteries. Now, one of the most common, most consistent energy batteries is Starlet and that's because of his special. He applies blinds and he grants to uh, ability energy to random adjacent allies and because 
if you place him all the way to end and placing someone like Doom right next to him, well, the only adjacent ally is going to be Doom. So you can feed those two ability energies and allow someone like Doom to use their ultimate on turn one or another character like Dagger to use her ultimate on turn one. So very, very good. And it, you're not just bringing him for the energy. You got also got blinds. Now, most people don't have their Star Lord built up a lot, so these blinds probably aren't gonna stick unless you're facing some weaker characters, but, uh, or, or you get a really good uh, RNG there with the focus resistance check, but this ability energy, very, very good. You probably want to place to the end and the character that you want the feed to energy right next to him. Another uh, energy battery, a little less consistent, but uh, probably a better character overall is Jessica Jones. Now, if you're using on an, uh, an A-Force and using on Doom with that team, then it's a little inconsistent, but this move right here, clearing all negative effects from self and all allies, and she's going to generate one ability energy for Dem Defender and A-Force allies, and then four ability energy for random allies. So this was not as as consistent, Storm is probably a little more consistent if you just want that ability energy going to one character. But if you just want ability energy going around to the team and it doesn't matter who it goes to, well, in, in that situation, Jessica Jones is your gal. And that is it, guys. Those are the best plug and play characters, in my opinion, in Cosmic Crucible. Are there other characters that I forgot on this list? Are there other characters that you're using in Cosmic Crucible right now that are helping you with multiple teams, especially on offense, to face these defenses? Let me know in the comments, guys. Hopefully, this video helps you. If it did, uh, share this with your friends. Tell them all about it. Uh, if you haven't already, check me out on social media. Check me out on social media. And if you want to support the channel, check out some of the sponsors down below. Have a great rest of your day. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Give me that Hulk fist bump before you go. Valley flying out. Have a great day, guys.